Welcome to this week's Legislative Update. I'm Jim Baumgart, your host. Thank you for joining us. And by us, of course, it is my old friend, Cal Potter. I shouldn't say old friend. My I good, am. My good friend. <laughs> uh, we're, we're on a, um, a mission at, that uh, every citizen should be on from time to time uh, because of the issue that took place in, in Virginia and uh, um, issues of the Ku Klux Klan and the Civil War and uh, Civil War statutes and other things. Uh, it's good to bring somebody that, like Cal Potter, who has a history major uh, and, and good background, uh, with my background, which hopefully is, is reasonably good, to discuss things so that people have a better understanding uh, and then can uh, make choices for, the, for themselves on what we're talking about. One of the things that uh, uh, has been an issue is the Civil War, and if you were a Southerner, Cal Potter, uh, nobody likes to lose, uh, whether it's a fight or a game or, or, or you know, whatever it might be. And they lost a major war that took uh, not only tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of Southern uh, soldiers, but the same for Northern soldiers. Okay. And the reason uh, is, is because um, they were afraid of Lincoln and that uh, they would lose slavery. And so some people would like to glorify acts that have taken place during the Civil War, like major battles or great um, um, generals or people that uh, became leaders or you know, spies and other things. But we have to remember that the South left the Union. As right. I recall from this, it said, um, the, uh, um, they violated the Constitution of the United States in 1861, April 12th. The South seceded uh, immediately after Lincoln was elected president. Doesn't sound like they were debating this in Congress. <laughs> South Carolina called for a state convention to remove itself from the United States of America. Sounds like uh, a violation of our Constitution. And was quickly followed by Florida, Mississippi, Georgia, Alabama, Louisiana, and Texas later followed by the rest of the South. It sounds like they were asking for a fight. Well, there was no redeeming legal or moral road here. The, they left the Union. They, they, they violated the Constitution. I mean, they tried to make it look legal by setting up a constitutional conventions and, and electing presidents, and, uh, but a charade. And they, they, what they did is basically uh, did a traitorous thing. They were traitors to right. the United States and uh, took up arms, and eventually it was a war with the United States. And so to, to somehow glorify, codify um, what they did, there's no legal reason, uh, basis to do it. And the moral issue, of course, is that the Southern economy, it's cotton and other commodities uh, were based on the backs of people who were slaves. I mean, they weren't human, treated as human beings. They, they were bought and sold, whipped, treated like animals. Um, and as a result, uh, there's no moral ground here at all. And so sometimes it was the defense of their culture. Well, their culture was, was a slave culture. And, and there's no way in God's earth that you could justify maintaining that or calling it right. And so people who say, we want to remember our culture, we want to go back to that time, um, they want to go back to the time when they had separation of the races, basically. I mean, after slavery was gone, then the Jim Crow laws came in effect. And as we've said in our previous program, uh, on the books, basically, the elimination of that type of separation and that type of prejudice wasn't until 1965. And when Lyndon Johnson signed both the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act, he turned to uh, his press, press secretary, uh, Bill Moyer, who you see on PBS, and, wrote, mm -hmm. and said, when I signed this bill, he says, the Democratic Party will lose the South for two generations. Well, Lyndon Johnson, as good of a man as he was, was wrong, because it's probably going to be 10 generations the way it's going. We're more than two generations now, past 1965, when, this, when Southern Democrats went from blue states the red states. They were called Dixiecrats at that time. And what's interesting about trying to solve racism and, and do away with laws is Lyndon Johnson 
knew he didn't, he didn't have in his own party, the Southern Democrats, enough votes. Mm. And so, you know, we talk about bipartisanship and going across the aisle and working together. Lyndon Johnson called in Everett Dirksen, a Republican from Illinois, and he sat him down and says, Everett, um, you know what's right here. You know what we got to do. I need your help. And, Lynn, and Everett Dirksen did find the votes mm -hmm. on the Republican side to help Democrats from the North. Uh, and then, of course, after that, all hell broke goes for the Democratic Party today. And so um, the conservative West, some of your states like Wyoming and Montana and so on, have gone uh, Republican. But the South is solidly Republican. I don't, you know, you don't, you don't hell freezes over before you'll see a Democrat elected. And that all goes back to um, the fact that the Democrats pushed civil rights legislation mm -hmm. in the 60s. Well, they wanted uh, uh, people to be able to freely go to the school that they they were sure. near to, and uh, I mean that was uh, the the Wallace thing and the uh, standing getting uh, sending in National Guard, uh, um, you know, the uh, General Eisenhower, President Eisenhower sending in the National Guard to protect people. It wasn't a uh, um, a, f a free and friendly um, uh, welcome of the uh, South to to uh, make sure that they became a. Um, integral part of the whole United States. Matter of fact, uh, when when uh, Grant uh, uh, accepted the um, uh, uh, Robert E. Lee's uh, surrender, which Robert E. Lee uh, hated. Matter of fact, he hated uh, and strongly didn't want to uh, join the Southern thing because he knew it was a violation of of his laws and his, and his constant conscience as a. Uh, I think he was a West Pointer, as I recall, mm -hmm. but um, but he, he wanted to go with the state, and he fought very well for the state. But nevertheless, he bought uh, illegally, and when Grant uh, accepted his um, surrender, uh, he gave extremely um, broad, um, positive things for the Southern soldier. He let them keep their horses if they owned them, and and their guns if it was. You know something they could use to harvest deer or whatever, um, and very few were punished. You know there were people that ran concentration camps or prisoner of war camps. Uh, they were punished if they had uh, done inhumane things, but uh, pretty much yeah. forgave the South, right. and they turned on them again. Well, and and like we said in the last program, when you got into the later 1800s. Uh, it didn't take long for the the Union troops to be pulled out of the South. There just was no interest. And in, costly. In, sure. And, and a lot of it had to do with attitudes uh, in both parties not to be punitive against people who were racist. Right. Um, like I said, in the 19, well, President Wilson was very much a, a racist. And in the 1920s, you started to see some change. Uh, in the 1920s, you had a lot of flooding down south, particularly along the Mississippi River. And a lot of black people who were tenant farmers were, were stranded. They were in dire straits. And they were appealing to the federal government for help to come at least get them. And, and white landowners down south particularly lobbied uh, Republicans in power in Washington, the conservative administrations, not to do anything. Because they said if they did, you're probably going to exacerbate the, what was just beginning at that time is a massive movement of black people from the rural agrarian society to, to the, north. the north, where there were, where were the jobs in the cities. Yeah. And, and so the Republicans did not do anything. And for the first time, Republicans before that uh, had a lot of support from black people because Abe Lincoln was uh, a Republican. And Democrats, the of course, were, 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 were in power down south because they were Democrats because Abe Lincoln was a Republican. And as a result, you didn't see a lot of movement politically to do something about the plight of the black. The, uh, then in the, the big change that occurred, started to occur, was under Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. uh, Roosevelt, being a very wealthy person, did have a social conscience, as you know, Social Security came out of that, the right to join a union and so on. He was really a, a progressive individual. But even better than Franklin was, was his wife, Eleanor. Mm -hmm. She had a great empathy for black people. And she went around and helped them organize and, and, and had empathy for them and sympathy. And had she been president, we would have seen a lot more movement, I think, 
uh, on equality for black people, that movement against the South Jim Crow laws uh, long before that. After uh, Roosevelt, of course, was Harry Truman. Harry Truman did desegregate the military in, I think it was 1947. So again, here we're moving to fairly modern times. Sure. It, during the during the, the 50s, of course, Eisenhower um, wasn't a racist, but he didn't have, he had a con Republican conservative Congress that had now moved over to being very much the white party. Mm -hmm. And as a result, you didn't see much in the way of laws. He had to send troops in to, to, to try to quell disturbances. But it wasn't until Kennedy, and Bobby Kennedy particularly, who started to anguish, what are we going to do about this this problem. This is this is a blemish on our society. On our, we need to do something. And so the the pot started to boil, and it culminated, of course, in when Johnson was president in the Civil Rights and the Voting Rights Act of '64 and '65. Well, and this is one of the reasons why uh, people have to be careful because the many individuals of the South would like to glorify some of the things that um, their uh, uh, leaders did uh, great battles, you know, victories, um, and that's okay. You want historically factual information, but you don't want to glorify somebody who has violated the law and has left the union and has um, turned on their nation. Uh, you should um, understand historically that they were criminals and they were forgiven. Uh, but they certainly didn't return the favor uh, they tried to regain. Um, and that's understandable that people that had power would like to get their power back. Uh, but they went to uh, uh, great lengths uh, by either uh, promoting uh, different issues or Ku Klux Klan that we talked about last time, uh, or just uh, not allowing people to vote or to go to school or to get the kind of education that would have brought them up to equal standards as um, the nation tried to provide the South when they lost the war by giving them a pretty good deal on the, uh, um, on the, uh, on, on the victory and the, and the loss. Well, the post-war, the post post-Civil War South until fairly recent times was a very segregated, a very racist community. I mean, there were black communities that didn't have sewers, didn't have water. People lived in hovels. People didn't own land. They were tenant farmers working for white people at very, very poor and wages. And the white, white, what they call the white trash or the white, white poor, they were in the same uh, situation as many of the blacks. Sure, and oftentimes, uh, as you're in the same status, you blame the other person for well, getting sure. the job. That it's you the black should. that got me yeah, in the poor right, situation. Right, right. And so you saw, you know, there was nothing done about Jim Crow laws or lynchings or any of those type of activities or, you know, even to this day, you will find, if you go down south, you'll find a lot of white kids in private schools mm -hmm. and the poor black schools are, are public schools. So I, I personally couldn't live down south, yeah. um, unless you're in like a university town and maybe Atlanta, some of that's become very sophisticated. But there are a lot of racist places. I mean, it's bad enough up here in people I deal with, uh, like you came with, who are racist. But uh, we still have that. It's a, it's a major problem in this country that isn't faced. Well, and, and talking about it and discussing uh, the issue, as we are in the last program and this one and the next two, um, hopefully will be added to the uh, uh, 50,000 that just uh, protested um, the uh, uh, Klan and others. Uh, uh, where were that in? Uh, Boston? Boston, I think, yeah. yes. Um, and in Madison and other places, people have protested. We need to protest a little bit, and we need to make sure that people understand the history. Uh, and with that, thank you, Cal Potter, for joining uh, this program. Until next week. This has been Legislative Update.